Welcome to ECCSC Live. I'm your host, Tyrone Muhammad. We're in for an exciting show today, an uh, interesting show, rather. I have to my right, Mr. Jedediah Brown. How you doing, Jed? Glad to be here, Ty. Yes, sir. Uh, so uh, get your calls ready. That's uh, 312-738-1060. Get your calls ready. Um, I would like to hear your questions, comment, as well as concern. Um, I would like to start off real quick by saying um, we appreciate our viewing audience and we thank you every week for commenting and calling in. Continue the feedback, continue the calls, and uh, we once again thank you for tuning in. Jedediah Brown is here today. I would like him to introduce himself as well as talk about his platform. Y'all know he's running for Alderman in the Seventh Ward. I want him to talk about that a little bit as well as his uh, leadership with his uh, Justice League organization. You're the president, right? That's the president. So, so let uh, Jedediah speak and um, he can tell you about himself. Well, I'm glad to be here with ECCSC, uh, Tyrone Muhammad. I'm Jedediah Brown. I've been a community advocate in Chicago for about a decade and a half now. And I am uh, very fortunate that some people have enough confidence in me to let me be their national president. It's an organization called the Justice Family. I am a, uh, a native Chicagoan, but today I'm repping my Atlanta family. So this is, uh, and our organization has a chapter in every state. And uh, uh, Atlanta Family, which is led by Nicole Sheridan, and Williams. I'm, uh, I'm just really fortunate because it's teaching people across the country to build community and to do direct action advocacy and uh, to do very uh, f and do philanthropic uh, projects that that uh, better or address uh, issues like the Flint water crisis. We took th three trucks to Flint. I'm very proud of it. Three trucks. Huh? How did the people receive you all? Um, I, th I think it was exciting because we did what we saw everyone else do. We set a truck up um, inside of the parking lots of like churches or, 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 or store and then we, d we decided to do it the, the justice way. We actually ended up going into the communities, knocking on the doors and delivering the cases of water directly to the residents and it was a, it was a life changing experience I'll never forget and Flint still needs clean water by the way. Even today, even today, even today, with all the media, with all the hoopla, they still need clean water. What's the issue when you left? When you was down there, what was the issue there? Uh, Flint still needs clean water. They started. They, uh, one individual, individual did get indicted, uh, 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 criminally charged. That was it from the from the statewide government. And uh, we expect to see more charges come to more individuals. But uh, the water, even though the the water is like not brown anymore, it's still giving people rashes on their body. It's still not safe to drink. It's still not safe to wash up in. And then you found a lot of senior citizens who were. Um, very happy that we were there uh, sending help from Chicago and other places around the country because they were running out of water they got to cook with that water they got to do everything with that water so it's, it's a very dire situation so anybody who can help please do it like uh, Colin Kaepernick just do it <laughs> just do it <laughs> just die and listen um, for the people who's uh, first I'm just their first time tuning in to ECCSC live on Cam TV our organization, Ex-Cons for Community and Social Change. Our motto is People Saving, P.S. And um, we believe that we shouldn't rely on politicians, we, although we can use their help to legislate properly. Um, we, we love the benevolence of people outside of our community. But what we have termed um, people saving is that we believe that we had a hand in contributing to the situations in our neighborhood that lead to gang, drugs, and violence. And therefore, we have taken an active stance to say, we'll get busy and do it ourselves. So as someone who's running for alderman, when these young men looking and women looking out there and they haven't seen any of the resources really trickle down in the community, and you're running for seven war aldermen, what are some of the things you see that you can do for your ward or the community that you will be serving that can reap some type of immediate results, even without you winning the alderman seat? So the first thing that I want to say is I'm running for alderman of the 7th Ward of Chicago. 
uh, and I'm very proud of the work that ECCSC is doing because I think that America, period, does not know how to rehabilitate. That's we right. sure know how to incarcerate, but we okay. don't know how to rehabilitate. We don't know how to uh, rebuild community. Um, and, and I think that the, um, the ex-offender population is um, underestimated and underappreciated. People who have served their time and done their debt to society, the government should be doing everything within their ability to make sure that those individuals are reintegrated into thriving communities. And so... Uh, some of the things that, well, well, I'm going to say this to our listening audience while I got the, the moment and your attention. We got a lot of people now saying that they want to run for mayor of America's third largest city. Hmm. But to my community specifically, I think we better have a tough conversation of who's going to be the people's candidate. Because even as I look at now, machine candidates start to mm, introduce themselves into the race. Mm. It's very important. And this is the kind of argument that I hope to be. I want to give the information to the people so that we can uh, uh, we can be active and address our issues. And I want to say this to the people. We don't need machine candidates to now put their names in the race and run Rahm Emanuel's third term. And if we don't get the mayor we want, we better get the council that we deserve. And so uh, as, as an alderman, I think that uh, one of the greatest honors that you get is to directly deal with the city services, making sure that streets are paved and that lights are, are, are light bulbs are changed and that there's a light assessment that the community is, is is, is illuminated enough for people to feel safe. Oh, they got somebody to call. <laughs> well, as you said. Go <laughs> no, no, you good. We're going to revisit that. Okay. But we're going to hear this caller and see what the yeah. caller has to say. He might have a poignant question for you. Caller, please. Hello? Yes, sir. You're on. ECCSC. How you doing, Mohammed? Yes, sir. Tyrone Mohammed, man. This is uh, DJ Mac City, man. What's up, brother? How you doing, man? You know what? I've been tuning into your show. I share all your information that you got going on. I love what you're doing for the city of Chicago, as well as that brother that's with you right now, man, running for all the day, man. That's good. That's a good thing right there, man. You know, one thing I got to say versus asking questions or making demands, people do nothing to make a change in the community that we live in, you know, and they always complain. They always through aggravation, they always, you know what I'm saying, assume, but they never do nothing for change. I'm all about that change, and I applaud you and that brother on your show right now for making a change in the community. So far, I think it will end all over Chicago, in in the United States. I know he say he from you know, Atlanta, but, you know, born and raised in Chicago. Man, it don't matter where you're from, making a change is just making a change, period, regardless of where you're from or where you're at, because it's all the same story everywhere you go. Thank you, know? you Max City. Max City is one of the official DJs for ECCSC. That's we kicked up. off our website lunch, and that brother was there, volunteered his services and everything. So I appreciate that brother, man, and um, what he do. He has things going on as well uh, with the community. Okay, call. we have another caller. Let's go with that call, and then you want to address... Well, I'm, I, I have a, a second residence in Chicago, but I'm a very proud... I'm in Atlanta, but I'm a very proud Chicagoan from here. Live here, love here. Just okay. to be clear. Next caller, please. Hi there, Jeremiah. Good to see you on TV, especially on Can TV. Here's a question for you. I'm a, a longtime resident of the Seventh Ward uh, in the South Shore area, South Shore neighborhood. What are what is the first thing that you would do to improve the overall economics of our ward? And I'll get off and let you talk directly. So. To stream to what do we call it? What's your name? Do we have his name? Thank you, call. Thank you. Go. So I mean to just answer this uh, really quickly. Um, I will. I think that we need to. Uh, I, well, first of all, I want the seventh ward to have the most skilled labor force in the city. Seventh ward residents should be able to work anywhere and get jobs right away. And so what I what I what I would like to see is opportunity and capacities gap be bridged. And so one of the issues with our elected officials now is that they don't have enough relationships outside of City Hall to get anything done. And so one of the things that I'm going to be doing differently is over a decade and a half of advocacy, I've been able and fortunate to meet some of the most brilliant minds of our day, some of the most uh, greatest developers and some uh, business owners. So I want to attract new 
companies that I have relationships with to come into the seventh ward while getting these young people and the residents trained to fill those jobs directly in the neighborhood, making sure that developers come in and community benefits is always the, the focal point. If you want to build in the seventh ward, you need to work within the seventh ward residents. Um, and, and I would like to also uh, make sure that those that are in the seventh ward that are residents there, that we get them the resources to create viable mom and pops along 75th Street and 79th Street and 83rd Street. We shouldn't have to beg for people to come in because there are entrepreneurs right in the ward That's that right. a good alderman will make sure that they got the resources to open up those businesses, the permits and everything else. That's the kind of alderman I want to be. Listen, that that's great. Um, let's hit this caller again. We have one more caller. Caller. Please state How your you name go? and why you called. My name is Danny Johnson. I'm calling. I want to ask Brother Jeremiah if he's gonna, uh, as an alderman, you know how they release the, uh, the ex felons and they let the police know how many ex felons in the community. I want to know how is he gonna do? Is he gonna go about finding out how many ex felons are in his community as an alderman and finding them the resources to get proper employment and training? Uh, well, I think that every... I'm going to say this, interrupt you real quick. First of all, he's going to tie himself and his, 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 his community to ECCSC so that we can assist in getting resources because this is what we do, all the ex-cons. We hope to bring that umbrella into one cohesive group. And Jedediah mentioned earlier, and I'm going to let him answer this question. I, I just gave him a part of it. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bring this with the help of the organization and the, and the uh, philanthropic efforts of the people that's associated with ECCSC, we hope to be able to bridge that gap, man. When guys, when these brothers is falling out of these prisons and they have no base of home and they're left homeless some, some, in some cases and they left family, family, family <laughs> list, shall I say. We want to be that family for the ex-cons. So this is our organization, this is your organization. Please, we have resources available. We can use more, but you can call ECCSC and we'll be able to uh, direct you, hopefully, to the proper resources. And if I wasn't a partner with ECCSC, I wouldn't have come on the show. So you got to work with the individuals that are doing the great work on the ground. And um, I, 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 I love what I heard a very brilliant uh, uh, individual say. Um, uh, and, 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 and by the way, I want to say this because I want to go directly to your question. Aldermen do have information at their disposal and at their fingertips uh, that can um, really, really, really put the statistical information in perspective so that they, that they can address these issues like um, the ex-offender population. But I, I don't. We, we need to rename that because ex-offender or, or having a history of having done or made a mistake. We've all made mistakes and we've all been ex-something. And so I like the way that the brilliant Tracy Bay said uh, when I spoke to her about um, um, our aldermen. We have them working a part-time job and we got full-time responsibilities. I don't want to just have the list of those who made mistakes and we want to identify them, but we want to be the kind of office that goes directly to those people and make sure that they have wraparound services to live a better life. And so you partner with, you know, one of the issues with our aldermen right now is that they, they treat community organizations as if it's competition. Right. When what they should be doing is making sure that people like Tyrone Muhammad, who works specifically with that population, is not only resourced, but respected and represented down in City Hall so that we're not starving or fighting for minuscule resources and or redirected resources that should be going to our neighborhood downtown. Uh, as an alderman, I want to make sure that I identify the these amazing community components I and I want to make sure that they have what they need uh, to do an effective job so yes so get that information we identify those individuals we identify those organizations I'm gonna be a full-time alderman and we're gonna go out and grab them and we're gonna be a and by the way for the seven war residents we're gonna be a family it's not gonna be just a war but we're gonna be the seven war family so remember that that's wonderful and this is the thing I feel the disrespect coming out it took me almost three weeks just to get ID. The aldermen should have some say so in that as well. Because if they're coming to your community, I believe that you should know the men that been released. Because if I come from prison after 20, 30 years, what is it do that man have to look for? 
uh, forward to if he can't even look forward to an ID that properly identify him, that allow him to even apply for a job. So these are some of the issues. But another thing I would like to talk about is that voting block. That ex-con population that they keep disrespecting. 30,000 or more formerly incarcerated men hit Chicago a year. How can people overlook the, uh, the uh, ex-con or the returning citizen population in such a, uh, I would say, grotesque way? And, and I want to put that in perspective, and I see you got that, but I want to put it in perspective. When you say ex-offender and ex-con, people need to get educated and understand that our government intentionally targeted our community and created a lot of ex-cons within the, you know, with the war on drugs. I've been arrested for protesting and exercising my constitutional rights around causes and having those charges, be it misdemeanor or felony, have affected my, my, my job quality and my life, my, uh, the quality of my life. And so we need to understand that we have been not just the ex-con communication uh, community, but we have all been disrespected and take and 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 uh, and, and um, taken advantage of by the parties that are and the elected officials and the systems that have ran before us. And what I'm just gonna say it like this, because I don't want to monopolize the conversation. It's time for us to to uh, it's time for a new beginning, and we have that opportunity right now. The mayor's not running, and we need to fire his city council, and we don't need to let any of the systematic system systems candidates become uh, uh, or get these spots. We need new thinking, fresh ideas with individuals who come from the community that's going to care about the community. And I'll tell you this, the days of disrespect for everybody will be over. If we can come up with a plan for new Americans, I'm pretty sure we can come up with a plan to reintegrate individuals that have paid their debts to society. Great response, Jedediah. Um, Carla, we're ready for you. Let's go. Carla, state your name and your purpose for Carla. Um. Hello, brothers. How you doing? My name is Lisa. I have a couple of concerns. Um, I have a, a couple of concerns because this is very sensitive to me. I want to know how will this alderman connect with other aldermen to connect with the government so we can have a movement, a change in the system about a party. But still, when you when you put these things in place, they still take, um, um, treat ex-offenders like second-class citizens of giving them low jobs because they've been to the joint or whatever. So even though you get them a job, it don't make a difference. They're not about to get paid the same type of money. My other thing, when our, when our fathers, our baby daddies, our fathers get out of prison, if they said they got low income, they can't come up to your crib. Right. You can't to let them in because you're going to lose your voucher. Uh, you know, and they breaking up the, the, um, breaking up the family. So how do we get to this government? You know, we need, we need a strong argument to politics to make a movement of this, one man making a decision for parties or all this. Once you do your time, you do your time. They do something else again, lock them up or whatever. But this big stigma for breaking up our families is out of order. Out man, of that's order. beautiful. Like I'm just asking you, how do we help? We, we help our, 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 our males and our females get out. If, if, if the family, on, they're on the ground because they didn't broke up the family anyway. Thank you. They Thank can't you. even live with them no more. Man, you just get a job, one. you ain't about to get paid. They say, like, if I'm getting paid 30, X percent to come in, they get 10 or 11 dollars because they did something. Come on now, somebody. We need a movement. What's up? Thank you. Thank you, sister. She said, what's up? I hope, I hope we got your information so we can finish that conversation she on fire. after the show. I love it. She on fire. But so you want to answer that? I really? definitely want to say that in order for the movement to begin, we got to vote. We got to register, and we have to. To vote, and we got to be willing to be patient enough to consider all of the candidates, not just the one with all the money and that's seen all over the place, because that may be the machine's pick. They'll resource them. You got to vote, and what you just did is how we begin these movements. I, I guarantee you that your experience is going to is is it, it'll meet reach someone else and cause them to also be activated. And the way that we're going to get aldermen to become more responsive to the needs of the people. And, and, and let me be clear here. Most of the young people who do community service for my organization, they come to me by way of the court system. And a lot of them who got community service come to us because they tried to visit their children on the Chicago Housing Authority uh, uh, 
a property that they're on a uh, trespass list for. Mm -hmm. They are breaking up our families. Imagine going to jail for trying to see your children. We see this every single day, day in and day out. And I'll, I'll, I'll say this because again, this you know I don't I don't with the, with the time frame. I've, I've been looking at this from the ground level for almost a decade and a half. And I'm look, we need to find candidates that's not afraid to talk about these issues. If they're afraid to talk about it and they can't provide a solution for so. it in a more in, involved and engaged uh, uh, setting, then that's not your candidate. You got to get out there, find them, you got to vote. And if they're not out there, put your name on the ballot and run. On that, on that note. Progressive party for the convicted class. Two P's, two C's. We're moving different, and in the next year or two, you're gonna see a different party. And we're gonna move men from them part to, to that, that uh, Democratic Party, Republican Party, to a progressive party. I'm telling you, I don't just see it as convicted as an ex-con, but convicted as in our communities have been condemned as well. And um, so next caller. Hello, my name is Andrew. Can y'all hear me? Yes, sir. Andrew? Yes, I'm Andrew, and I'm calling from... Well, actually, I'm not in y'all's face. I'm calling from Long Beach Tech. That's okay. We need your help from and, uh, Long Beach Tech. What? Long Beach what? Longview. Longview. We need your help from Longview, brother. Yeah, I got something to say with that late, young lady just said. I ain't, I ain't hear all of it, but uh, I do want to say I agree with what she said. Um, I have a friend named Janelle Brown. He um, he did uplift the community, and he wrote a book. And he was talking about he, and he was talking about um, how to get your stuff expunged. Yo yo yo! Uh, what you talking about? Your conviction, the expungement. He was talking about expungement, um, getting your records expunged. Mm -hmm. um, should should the aldermen also have a stake in expunging the the citizens or the residents that they are the aldermen over or the wards that they're aldermen over? I'm going to say that it's the responsibility of the aldermen to make sure that all the government services are at the fingertips of the residents. And so I would work with the clerk's office to make sure that expungement summits are held in the ward. And uh, I'm going to just put it to you like this. I want two buses. This is one campaign promise. If I'm elected as alderman, I'm going to have two buses that belong to the, to the ward. And if it means that we got to get people down to get expungement, if we got to get you to classes to get your credit straight, if we got to help you understand how the city government works, and if they're doing something down in the city council, that's funky. We're going to board them buses, and we're going to make sure that the seven words. So seven these words buses are, is on standby when gonna, something stinks. Man, seven words going to be moved. I'm going to call my seven words family. <laughs> Let's go, uh, caller, please. Jedediah. How you doing? Frankie. Security team. What up, bro? Oh, what's up, Frankie? <laughs> <laughs> you got a run for mayor, dude. Come on. What are you holding for? <laughs> That's too much, man. How you going to run him for mayor? He running for all of it. Let him do one thing him. first. Well, it's, it's good to have his confidence, <laughs> it's gonna though. It's going to make it, my man. You, man. I want to let you know we love you out here in Indiana, and you know we're on standby if you ever need us. Thank you, Frankie. Man, Frankie, Frankie good, is a good, good job. He's man. a great man. <laughs> Any other callers? Callers, come on through. <laughs> Next call. Hello, this 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 sister Lisa again. This is very sensitive, and I ain't. <laughs> All right, sister Lisa, <laughs> you better make sure. I got my own. This need to be a guest. You're a special uh, guest. Oh, oh, oh. Talk, a, a residential uh, guest, please. Yeah, 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 I got my record sealed up. All of it. Did, did this thing with this? Yes, this thing with 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 this um expungement is all about money. Okay, so it's we need a pardon and we need to make a move. And they have summit after summit every year. But it's still the same thing. So who do you suggest that we put on the ballot? Me or you, brother, you up here who got this ECCSC. You need to be an alderman. I need to be in your system. I need to be, because we need a movement, period. Because even when you go downtown to the circuit court, they still got stigma. They run a game. It's over with. Let's get busy. Sister I Lisa, information. I need your information. So, but this is what I want to say to so you we real can, quick. Uh, have a movement. Who would you? Sister Lisa. This is the deal with formerly incarcerated men. Although we go back to the neighborhoods, we know our community, they have a policy in city council, city council or the city, 
that I can't run for alderman, but I can run for the president of the United States. They blocked it for so that ex felons can't run for alderman in the wards that they return to. So how do we deal with that, Jedediah? Well, I think that again it goes back to voting and people who understand policy. You, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to reimagine what government looks like, but we can only do that with individuals who have the will and the capacity to, to, to create new architecture. The architecture of our governance has been intentionally designed for us to fail. And it's time for us to elect people from our community that will shift and turn the tide. Next caller, please. Hi, I'm calling from Decatur, Illinois. And I've been watching, listening to your show for quite a while. And I need to ask you a couple of questions. Because yes. mm, me and myself, I'm an ex-defender too. And I was just wondering, you know, how can I get started with, with one of the chapters in Decatur for um, ex-defenders here? That's one question. And another question is, if the guest was to be alderman, would he support ECSC? ECCSC. ECSC. If I'm not, I'm, I'm hope I'm saying this right. Correct. Well, call sister and leave your information. I, I most definitely need sisters on board that can be that can be uh, representatives of ECCSC, and most definitely we will we will start a, a chapter in Decatur. And uh, Jedediah, the next the other question was, do you support ECCSC? Which I think he do, but I'm gonna let him speak for himself. I, th no, I support it better than Lysol cleans germs. They only give you 99.9. I'm giving these ECCSC 100 percent. Of course, that's my brother. I think he does Thank great work. Any other calls? Okay, try to die in closing. Um, you have a, you we got about four or five minutes left. I would like you to uh, pretty much give a synopsis of what it is you see yourself going in the next what two three months, and um, you know, you have any upcoming events planned. So we have launched our campaign, and I would love to get people that were willing to volunteer and talk about all the wonderful stuff that we're going to do. But I think that for these, I'll take one minute and, and make this about something far more important. There should be no Chicagoan that's not engaged with what's taking place in our city right now. We have waited seven long years for the moment that we have today. The only way that we're going to get a shift and a better quality of life for us, our children. We got the possibility to get well-funded public schools. We got the possibility of getting quality food in our neighborhoods, mental health services restored, somebody that will actually sit down and figure out how to solve the pension crisis without making your property taxes unbearable. We need somebody that will make Chicagoans run back to the city versus away from it. The only way that we're going to get that is that if you, your grand, your, your, the, the, the seasoned, the young folks, the middle aged, all of us, we have got to pay attention this election cycle. And I, this is just a little bit of advice that I got. Fire all the incumbents and let's find some people that's really going to love and care for this city. I want to introduce that word to this political season. We always heard about what they know, what they've done, and who they are. But who actually loves Chicago and cares about Chicago? Let's find those people and get them elected. I love y'all. Thank you, thank you, brother. Um, in closing, if you out there and you're watching this program and you know a loved one who's incarcerated, or if you yourself is a, a, a person who's uh, formerly incarcerated, and if you're not a part of this organization, then how do you give back? This is the perfect uh, place to start. This is the perfect foundation for you. This is your home. Let's get busy. Let's build our movement. Let's build our team. Let's get into these schools, these grammar schools, these corners, these, I mean, these highways and byways, and let's save our people. Let's save our sons. Today, shooting Langley, 90th, I think, in Langley, three people shot. And did anybody die, you know? I'm, I'm going to go check on that when I leave here. We can't keep burying our sons over senseless violence. Ex-cons for community and social change, our number one motto is violence prevention, de-escalation. So please, people, join 
Visit the website and um, let's start a movement around this here issues. Thank you for tuning in. Until next week. Peace.